guys? I'm Grandmaster Shaman, and welcome back to episode number eight of uh, Sakura Night 3. I almost forgot it there for a second. Uh, in the last episode, we had a, a, an encounter with a wolf, and uh, it, was a, it was a good time. It was a good time. I hope you guys did enjoy the last episode. Make sure you guys go back, like all the previous videos, watch them all, go back and watch some of the other Sakura series as well. And now it is time for our final battle. <clears throat> It's so dark in here, I can't see a foot in front of my face. How are the rest of you holding up? I glance behind my shoulder at Rune, Tart, and Felicia. I think I'm looking at them, at least. But the interior of the cave, it's pitch black, and it's hard for me to pick out their faces in the gloom. I can barely distinguish between my companions, much less read the looks on their faces. I think that might be Tart to my right, on account of the triangular ears which sprout up for, from her scalp. But that could also be Rune. Ah, uh, this is hopeless. I feel almost completely blind. Yeah, <laughs> struggling, are you? Uh, the figure on my right laughs. I guess it must be Tart after all. I'd recognize that smug little giggle of hers anywhere. I think anybody would struggle to see in the dark. Why do you sound so unaffected? Silly Estelle. Tart loops an arm around my shoulder. I can scarcely see her, but I can feel the weight of her arm around me. I'm a cat girl. My vision is far superior than that of an ordinary human's. I can see quite easily, even in conditions such as these. Really? I didn't know that. I guess the physiology between humans and cat girls are more different than I thought. Tart's ears and tails aren't the only aspects of her that can set her apart. That must be nice. It is indeed. It makes sense uh, sneaking out in the dark a cinch. Eyes like mine are a must if you want to become a cat burglar. They... Uh, facilitated many daring heists. <laughs> I don't think that's something you should be proud about. <sighs> I wonder if to... I'd like to think Tart turned over a new leaf, but sometimes she says... Some of the things she says do make me wonder. What about you, Room? Are you alright? I fine. Can see just as well. No better than Tart. My sh senses are sharp. Sharper than my claws. I know get lost. Hmm, that's a relief. I guess we can rely on you. Hmm... I'm glad you can see the way, but I am every bit as lost as fair Estelle. We elves might have sensitive ears, but our eyesight is nothing special. This darkness is impenetrable. It is kind of creepy, too. Since I can't see the ground, I'm not sure where to put my feet. The rocky ground is bumpy and uneven. I stumble on numerous occasions, and Rune has to reach an arm out to settle me. Thanks, Rune. No problem. Always here for you, Etsy. I appreciate the gesture, but the fact of the matter remains that I simply can't see. I walk slowly and hesitantly. I'm afraid, with each step, that I'll trip over a rock or top, topple into a dark chasm into, to, my, uh, to my doom. What if these traps are set up, What if there are traps set up in this place? We haven't run into any spikes or rolling boulders just yet, but it seems like the sort of thing Saga might set up. We are wandering into her lair, after all. Does she know that we're here? What if she sets a bevy of monsters after us? I'm not the most amazing fighter at the best of times, but it would be impossible for me to fight in circumstances like this. I'd be too afraid of accidentally decapitating one of my party members to even draw my sword. Lost in the dark, I have no way of seeing. I'd be, I'd be run through in seconds. It's a chilling thought. Almost as chilling as the dark, musty air. There isn't any weird uh, wind here, um, but it feels awfully cold. My skin is prickling. I knew I should have brought more armor before I decided to face down Saga. Hey, Tart. I slide a little bit closer to Tart. But you slid to Felicia. But I soon proved to be mistaken. I not Tart. I rune. I know it dark, but please don't mix us up. We nothing alike. Yeah, did it be mistaken for me? It's upset you that badly? Yes. Ouch, you're not one of those mid... You're not one of mid's words, are you? Yeah, well, I guess it makes sense. You have to be... You have to best uh, grasp of common Lumurian to, uh, to begin with. The words you can use are severely limited. Guys, please, don't fight. Now isn't the time. I was just wondering. I look at Tart. I know this is Tart now, hopefully. Can you use some uh, magic to lighten up the cave? Oh, yes, that is a good idea. You have quite the command of magic, don't you, Tart? Uh, you'll never fail to let us know uh, you are the pretty magical cat witch. I've heard it so many times, I feel the dream of those lines in my sleep. <laughs> You're one to talk. Felicia loves to announce uh, to all the sundry the fact that she's Felicia Maribel Dogmentino. Has she not realized how repetitive she is? Maybe she uh, has some rare verbal tick. Could you perhaps per chance 
uh, use some sparks to light up our surroundings. It would help Estelle and I greatly. It is hard to navigate without any lights, I fear. Well, I guess I could, but I don't know if it would really be safe. I hear Tart shifting. I, is she folding her arms? Hey, if this saga spoke to you in her dreams, Estelle, she must be a pretty gifted at magic herself. Most mages can snip out other mages. Using magic leaves a trace in the air, kind of like a signature. If I used any spells, no matter how weak, Saga would know that we're here. It'd totally blow our cover. Of course, there's a chance you might already know we're here. But it's better to be safe than sorry, don't you believe? I suppose you... So, thank you for the explanation, Tart. I have no magical knowledge myself, so I don't realize. That is most elucidating. No prob. I hear a grin at Tart's voice, even if I can't see it. I'm pretty good at going undetected. You don't make a living on the streets for years without learning how to slink about in the shadows. Still, that is kind of strange. What's strange? That you don't know any magic. I thought elves were supposed to be the most talented mages there are. I thought you guys are all one with nature. Why can't you command vines or water at the very least? I always wondered that too, actually. I didn't want to ask, in part because I thought it'd be rude, and in part because I was afraid Felicia launching into yet another one of her lengthy diatribes. But it is odd that Felicia, as an elf, seemingly has no magical abilities whatsoever. Elves are supposed to be renowned for magic. Oh my, it seems I've made you worries. My apologies, it was not intentional. I will try to explain my predicament, but worry not, I shall be brief. That, that's a small mercy. Though I'm knowing Felicia's warped onset of time, her brief could be anywhere up to six hours. It is true that most elves are born with the innate ability to cast magic, but not all. There are a few rare exceptions to this rule, and I happen to be one of them. Though I was born to a king and ki queen of Gree, I have no magical abilities to speak of. My parents were quite shocked when they learned about how powerless I am, so, uh, and so were the courtiers, and my extended family members, and all of Gree's citizens. It was unheard of at the time for a king and queen to sire a completely non-magical child, and for it to be their firstborn, too. It caused quite the commotion. People feared that it would, I would be unfit to rule. It was the duty of the king and queen to protect their kingdom, after all. There was a, uh, talk of my inheritance being annulled, and the right to future queenship passed to my younger sister. But that did not discourage me, rather it only convinced me to push myself to the limits, so that I could better prove myself... I cannot use magic, but I can still fight, and I can make quite uh, a good queen regardless. That is what I wish to prove by embarking on this quest. I shall accomplish many great feats, prove my mental, then there will be no more dissent against my ascension to the throne, and my people will all grow to accept me. Nope. That is my dream. Silence dep uh, uh, descends upon the cave after uh, Felicia's resounding speech. True to her words, that was rather brief. Certainly it was briefer than her lengthy description of living in a palace the night prior. I wasn't really listening to her back then, but this tale stirs something within me. I never thought I'd feel sympathy for something s uh, for the seemingly perfect Felicia, but that, wa uh, that was because I never knew how imperfect she really was. Because a princess who was deemed unfit to inherit her own throne because of something beyond her control, is that why she works so hard? I thought Felicia was talented at everything, but I was wrong. She skil she's skilled with the sword because she worked hard at it. Felicia, my, soft, uh, my voice softens. I didn't know that. Well, one does not like to talk of one's own failings, Felicia laughs lightly. It's something of an embarrassing subject. My si siblings like to remind me of all I lacked on a daily basis. They could all use magic, you see. I was the only one who could not. I love my siblings a good deal, but their teasing did sting. As their eldest sister, I wanted to set a good example. I wanted them to respect me. I wanted everyone to respect me. But respect does not come, it does not happen simply by wishing for it. It only occurs when one works hard enough to achieve it. I was born with a disadvantage, yes, but I shall not come, uh, succumb to it. Neither do I care to dwell on it. Moping about it shall not change things. Only action can show my true resolve. Hmm, go figure. Imagine this weirdo having such a sympathetic backstory. I thought you were supposed to be super rich lady who grew up in a palace and has maids to do your bidding. I didn't know you ever felt inferior. I don't like to dwell on such things. But I admit, in my darkest of moments, I have wondered whether I was born in, under an unlucky star. It does not seem fair, really, that I should be m m maligned. So, because of something beyond my control, but I think my misfortune allowed me to sympathize with others. I wish to help people so that they do not feel as I did. 
I want to be a queen, but I would like to be a valiant knight, too. Fell serious, that rare. She try hard, I never knew. Maybe I, f I judge Fell too fast. Oh my, Fell giggles. Are you saying that you finally understood my charm, Rune? Are you saying that you were even ever... Uh, are you sorry that you were ever mean to me or give me the cold shoulder? If you, I, if you wish to apologize and throw yourself into my arms, I have no objections. You can cuddle me all you want. Please rest your he head against my bosom and tell me how incredible I am. I hear a scuffle of footsteps. Rune must be taking a step back. I changed my mind. Fell no good. Has Her brain has worms. She's still dumb. <laughs> being uh, complimented by a pretty girl is heavenly, but being insulted one is almost as good. I have a big heart. I will accept any words you wish to throw at me. Of course, I would be too happy to accept your hugs, too. Please embrace me with your warm body, Rune. No, no embrace. You get back. Now, now, don't be shy. I know you love me, really. Felicia tries to pull Rune into a tight hug, but it's too dark and she can't see where she's going. Rune, by contrast, can see just fine, and she's able to sidestep Felicia's advances with ease. Felicia lunges past Rune, and she's moving so fast she can't stop herself. Oh my! She totters unevenly, her hand reaches out in the dark, trying to grab the wall of the cave to steady herself. But rather than cold, unfeeling rocks, her hands instead clap down on my chest. I can't remain upright, and now I'm falling too. And they scream, and a moment, a momentary sensation of falling. My hair whips around my face, and I, my stomach lurches, and then a dull thud. Ugh. Oh, that's not too bad. She fell on top of her. Okay, interesting. I smack against the ground. It doesn't really hurt, though. It feels oddly warm, too. I wonder, Felicia? I glance down. It's hard to see, but I can't. I can make out a soft, fleshy lump laying beneath me. The lump has a very strong pastel pink uh, hair that is coiled around the floor and an undoubtedly attractive body. I know what's uh, happened even before the flesh lump be beneath me moans. Estelle, you must have landed on me. Oh, right. Sorry, my voice trails off. I scowl indignantly. Hey, wait. Why am I apologizing to you? I only fell over because you grabbed hold of me. Shouldn't you apologize instead? Oh, indeed, I am sorry, but I feel at the present, if you don't get off of me, I might expire before we're able to face Saga. I do not mean any offense, but you are heavier than you look. Perhaps you have eaten one too many pastries in your time. Bitch, what? Yo, hold up a second there, Felicia. Aren't Felicia's boobs bigger than the main characters? Come on, don't, don't give me that shit. Look at her thigh. She's got plenty of pastries in her time too don't give me that they're, not, they're both not fat or anything what why you i scowl at felicia though my uh though much of my race is swallowed by the dark don't insult my weight there's nothing wrong with me i've been practicing my sword every single day for all you know this extra weight could be muscle not fat i'm not squishy in the slightest so there I beg to differ, your plush behind is so adorably squishy, and so is your chest. If you do, do not get off of me, I shan't be able to go on appreciating these things. I really will die. Oh, right. Some of my self-righteous anger fades away. Now I can finally take uh, stock of the situation. I'm in a rather compromising position, at least. My rear is raised in the air. I can see Etsy's butt. It's big and round, like a moon. <laughs> I try to pull down my skirt with my hands. My elbow digs into Felicia during this process, and she gasps. Ooh. It's so dark in the cave, a normal person like me can't see a thing. But Rune and Tarn aren't normal people. Their eyes are more sensitive than mine, and right now they must be able to see my ass in all of its glory. How could I have forgotten about that? <sighs> Stop looking at my butt, you two. It's too embarrassing. <sighs> now I'll never be able to get married. I'm not sure that's how that works. Ah. After what feels like many hours of walking, my party and I fi finally arrive at the heart of Saga's lair. We encounter a circular room made of gra granite. The granite flows with a greenish light that makes everything look faintly unreal. Ah, I knew it. New Hampshire. Well, that is a pretty terrifying place. There's a stone. <laughs> there's a large stone throne in the middle of the chamber, which is flanked on either side by flickering candles. And there, sitting upon the throne, is the woman who invaded my dreams and threatened to kill me. It's Saga. She doesn't look at all surprised to see us. 
Instead, she's surveying us through lidded eyes, a smugly amused smile playing about her lips. Not by my fancy seeing all you guys here. You came quicker than I thought. You're awfully hasty, young travelers. Uh, don't you care, uh... Do you not care one whit for your own welfare? <laughs> if I wanted, I could escort you to ashes where you stand. Wouldn't that be amusing? Uh, perhaps it might be for you, but alas, I do not particularly enjoy being in pain. I hate to turn around, uh, turn down such a beautiful woman, but I am one who likes to do the scorching. Me too. There isn't a single masochist bone in my little body. I don't like pain either. But maybe Etsy does. <laughs> to be fair, Etsy is kind of a she's more of a more of a an M than a than an S for sure. But she's more she's just kind of submissive, I think. And uh, I I could I could at least uh, connect to at least the submissive part. I'm not a masochist, but crap! No, now everybody's looking at me, Saga included. What did I do to deserve all of this attention? I don't know what you're talking about. It's not like I, I, I like being in pain or anything. So you prefer inflicting it. That's not what I meant. The world doesn't have to be so black and white. People aren't either sadistic or masochist. It's there are shades of gray. Ah, yes, indeed. That is only common sense. But it does make me wonder, where do you fall precisely upon this spectrum? Hmm, do tell. I'm very interested. A foolish question such as this is beneath me. Saga le leans forward in a throne and surveys us with narrowed eyes, one hand beneath her chin. <sighs> but I don't like being kept in the dark. Hey, if you wish to discuss something, Little Knight, you should do so with everybody in the room. It's bad metal manners otherwise. Now tell me, what are your preferences? <laughs> Even she's curious. I mean, they've, they've already done it once, right? Why do you care? It's not. Uh, this is totally not why we came here. Uh, yeah, right, I'm forgetting myself. Forgive me, I've been in this cavern for a long time, plotting my revenge uh, in Gunhild's name. Uh, it's just been a while since I last got to speak with people as energetic as you, so I got a bit carried away. Not that I was lonely or anything. Uh, I, I don't want to be your friend or anything, you idiots. Uh, I don't even know where you got that ridiculous idea. Now bow down before my feet and eat the dirt. <clears throat> Taga looks at Saga flatly. None of us suggested that you were lonely. You brought that up by yourself. Saga winces. Her face turns red as her fiery hair and her fingers clench around the armrests of her throne. Our obvious embarrassment is kind of endearing, actually. She's every bit as awkward and clumsy as I remember. In fact, I think she even be, might be even more socially inept than I am. Hmm, good grief. This is, is this really the woman who spoke to you in your dreams, Estelle? I'm having a hard time to see believe she can crush an ant, much less a whole army of monsters upon Grimoire. Ah, she doesn't seem to be the type. That's her, all right. I wouldn't mistake her. Her appearance is quite... something. I glance over at Saga. Her long, flo uh, curly hair flows around her shoulders like fire. Horns protrude from her skull, and a long, thick tail swishes between her folded legs. Her outfit is all black, and it's very tight. Her voluptuous bosom can barely be contained by her suit, and a ref... Uh, uh, Ruff of jet black feathers rings around her neck. All things considered, she certainly stands out, and that's not just because of how tall she is. Her st uh, statuette, her stat, statuesque, a little like uh, she's statuesque, a little like like a fashion model. Ooh, she's definitely beautiful. Her, uh, but her angry, blushing cheeks are doing their darndest to undermine her otherwise imposing aura. How dare you suggest insolent nonsense in my presence within my lair? I'm just one of Gunhill's most loyal followers. I loved her with all my heart. I would do anything for her sake, and indeed I have. I can crush people just as easily as I crush ants, and I would rain ruin down upon all of Lemuria if I could to avenge the death of the woman I love so dearly. Don't you dare look down upon me. I won't let you. You have no right. After I to I've toiled for so long and struggled so much to realize... Gunhild's ambi- Saga's self-righteous tirade falters. She presses one hand against her mouth, wincing. It looks like she's in pain. Oh dear, you are right, my fair dragon maiden. Did something happen? I- I'm fine. I just- bit my tongue. 
Oh, now that's a pity. I hope it doesn't hurt too much. As a future queen, I cannot bear to see anyone suffer, particularly not a maiden like yourself. If you are in pain, it is my duty to help you. Ah, so shall I offer your... Uh, uh, to kiss your injury better. A uh, kiss Saga stares at Felicia, eyes wide as saucers. Oh, what, what are you talking about? It's not like I want to share a kiss with an unworthy woman like you. The only person I love is Gunhild, and she's not here, but her spirit remains within me, and I would never betray it. I have pledged my heart and body to her. Your, your k k kisses would only tar tarnish these fond memories of mine, you foul succubus. I'm not a succubus. Do you not see these ears? I'm an elf. I don't care what you are, you're impertinent. That's what you are. Asking for kisses of all things. Well, I never... Anybody would balk at such brazen request. Uh, I think she's might be right about that, actually. Uh, you take your jokes a little too far, Felicia. Oh, sorry, sorry. I do like cursing pretty girls, it's true. I would not be opposed to the idea at all. But I wouldn't wish to make you jealous, my dear Estelle. Moreover... The laughter fades in Felicia's voice. Her gloved hands reach for a sword. Her silvery greaves glisten in the flickering candlelight. We do not come here to engage in small talk. This woman has confirmed that she is indeed a villain. Beautiful though she is, this means she uh, she means to bring great ruin upon the Muria. In the name of Felicia Maribel D'Argentino, I cannot let that happen. I am a princess. One day, I shall be queen. It is my duty to protect my people, nay, all people, from any harm. If you persist in fighting, I shall be forced to answer in turn. I do not like to use violence, but you leave me no choice. <laughs> Saga laughs. It's a little shaky sort of laugh. But what it lacks in confidence, it makes for up for in sheer volume. Her peals of laughter are so loud I can hear it ringing inside my skull. Yes, as expected. Good, very good. I w it wouldn't be fun if I beat you too easily. I'm glad I have you have some fight in you. That will make it even more amusing when I best you. Saga rises to her feet, her tail switching. I am not afraid, you see. I am accustomed to combat. Your silly sword can't do a thing to scratch me. <laughs> That's what Saga says, but she's totally trembling. For all her bravado, she looks terrified. Now I'm starting to feel guilty for facing down against her. This is all her fault. She's the one who started all this. I do have a question, though. Oh, what is that? Felicia grins. If you would like to th know my measurements, I'd be more than happy to tell you, but then I will have to kill you. No, not that. I wanted to know how you got past my vicious guard without so much as a scratch. He not vicious? What? Saga goffs at ruin and disbelief. That wolf is a frightening beast. He attacks me whenever he sees me. What am I? And I'm supposed to be his mistress. <sighs> I was certain he would subdue any intruder. His teeth are sharp like knives. His teeth sharp, yes, but he no bad. He's sweet and kind, cute even. I gave him food. He let me pat his head. His tail wagged like puppies. He my new friend. Friend? Saga stares at Rune in disbelief, her mouth hanging open. It can't be. Uh, I was supposed to, uh, he was supposed to guard this cave. I gave him strict orders. Why does nobody ever listen to me? It's just not fair. I thought it was bad enough when I got attacked by those slimes that I summoned in the forest that one time, but this takes the cake. So she's finally admitting that I think that that's a thing that happened, is she? I guess playing pretend can only get you so far. I can't perform simple spells without them backfiring. I accidentally revealed the location of my hidden la lair to my own enemy, and now my vicious guard wolf has betrayed me. The whole world's against me. It's like the universe wants me to fail, but no matter. All right, the final battle begins. I'm not entirely sure exactly uh, how intense this is going to be, but I'm going to try and make it as intense as humanly possible because I can, I guess. But thank you guys so much for watching this episode. I hope you guys did enjoy. Next episode might be the last episode. We'll have to see. Make sure you guys hit that like button and let me know in the comment section your thoughts on this series thus far. Thank you guys for all the support that you guys give. And make sure you guys check out all the links in the description, Twitch, Twitter, um, you know, you guys can subscribe to my Twitch channel, get a cool emote, all of that good stuff, and we'll see y'all next time.